Good morning, Algebra. This is Mr. Roush bringing you the 16-1 lesson, solving quadratic equations by using square roots. Uh, there's a couple of products, uh, properties that you're going to have to put in your notes right away, like the product property of radicals. That means if you take the square root of a number times a number, it can be written as the square root of A times the square root of B. So, for example, you want to find your perfect square roots, which would be like 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, and the list goes on and on. So we want to find a perfect square root that would be for 45 and break it up into two different parts. So 45, I would say, look, square root of 9 times the square root of 5, which we can simplify this because the square root of 9 is 3, so this would be 3 times the square root of 5. If we did this with... Uh, any numbers, just look for any of the perfect squares. Now we have the quotient property of radicals, which means when you divide uh, a divided by b inside of the radical sign, it's the same as the square root of a divided by square root of b. So for example, if we have the square root of 5 over 25, that would equal square root of 5 divided by square root of 25, which equals square root of 5 divided by 5. And that's as simple as you can go. Now, if you have the square root of a decimal, you could turn this into a fraction. So 0 0.07, think about seven cents over a dollar, would be the square root of seven over 100, which would equal square root of seven divided by square root of 100, which equals square root of seven over 10. And that's as simple as you can go. So these are just a couple of the properties that you're gonna have to know before you get working on this lesson. Uh, now we're going to talk about solving using square roots. Now you could always pause this video, write down the notes, and uh, go that route. So now we do have the uh, solving using square roots. So if we have 2x squared minus 8 equals 0. And the variable we would like to solve for is our x. So with our x being right here, we need to use the inverse operations to get rid of the negative 8. So we're going to add 8 to both sides. Then do some math. 8 equals 2x squared. Now we want to do the inverse operation of multiplying. So 2 times x, we're going to divide both sides by 2. And we're going to be left with x squared equals 4. Now to undo the squaring of something, you have to take the square root of both sides. Remember the golden rule of algebra, whatever you do on one side, you must do to the other. So when you take the square root of something, the two numbers that can multiply to get to a four would be a positive two and a negative two. So you will have two answers for each of these. So if you guys go ahead and try number three and four in your workbooks, and then I will go over how to do number four. That would be a little bit uh, harder one. So number four, we have two x squared minus 128 equals zero. So you're gonna solve it. We're gonna add 128 to both sides. So 128 equals two x squared. Now we're gonna take the inverse operation of multiplying, which is dividing by two, divided by two, x squared equals 64. Now to undo the squaring, we must take the square root of both sides. So x equals a positive 8 and negative 8. And those are your answers for that. So if you ever need any extra help on this, you can go to the HMH player. The video is posted online as well. Now we have one more part that we have to talk to, talk about, which is kind of the same where you're doing the inverse operations every time, but it's just written a little bit differently. So we have a times x plus b squared equals c. So for example, we have x plus 5 squared equals 36. So the first thing we must do here is since this is in parentheses, get rid of that square. So to get rid of a square, you must take the square root. And whatever you do on one side, you must do on the other side. 
So to get rid of that square, we're left with x plus 5 equals, now remember this 36 turns into two different numbers. So we get x plus 5 equals 6 and x plus 5 equals negative 6. You will have two answers to this and you will have two answers to almost every one of these problems. So now all we have to do is just solve for x. Minus 5, minus 5, x equals 1. And now we're going to subtract 5 from this side, minus 5, x equals negative 11. So x equals 1 and negative 11. You can always double check this by plugging it into the x here. So if you have x plus 5 squared equals 36, now instead of the x, we're going to plug in the 1. 1 plus 5, 6 squared equals 36. That works. Now let's do the same thing x plus 5 squared equals 36. Instead of the x, we're going to plug in a negative 11. Negative 11 plus 5, negative 6 squared equals 36. So it is true. That's how you can double check those. Now I'll show you how to do a little bit harder one where we're actually going to have a number in front of the a instead of just a 1. All right, so we have uh, 3 times x minus 5 squared equals 18. There's only one more step that you're going to have to do, and that's get rid of this 3. Since it's 3 times those, we're going to divide this side by 3 and divide this side by 3. Those cancel out. You're left with x minus 5 squared equals 18 divided by 3, which is 6. Uh, plus, and min er, plus and minus 6. So now what we're going to have to do is we need to get rid of that squared. So to get rid of the squared part, you must take the square root. Square root, square root. Or, sorry. Now after the square root becomes plus or minus 6. So now we're going to be left with x minus 5 equals square root of 6. x minus 5 equals negative square root of 6. Now you just have to solve it. We're going to add 5 to both sides. x equals 5 plus the square root of 6. Please do not make that a square root of 11. That does not work. They're not the same thing. Same thing, we're going to add 5. x equals 5 minus the square root of 6. Now if you want to, you could break this up into x equals 5 plus or minus the square root of 6 and just put it all together. So that would work for you. Now if you have any questions on this, please feel free to reach out. I've gone through a couple of the examples and if you have questions, please talk to me about that. You can reach me through email at eric.rausch at ict Thank you.